Hey guys, uh, it's Bill. I hope you're doing well. Um, this is a sort of crash course in our project for the week for music class. Um, we're going to be using GarageBand as we talked about in our class. Uh, and we're going to be focusing on a multi-track sequence, which means we're going to have four tracks, individual instruments um, for only four measures. So it's going to be a short sequence. So uh, all of you should have GarageBand. If for some reason you don't and you're having an issue finding it or opening it, please let me know. Send me an email or a message in classroom and uh, we'll figure it out. But right now, our basic goal is to create a four track original, all original sequence, song, whatever you want to call it. Um, this is quite, kind of a practice, but what we're going to do is we're going to first open up GarageBand, however you go about doing that. Um, for me, it's in my applications folder and I'll double click. Now, when you open up GarageBand, um, if you've used GarageBand before, which is great, um, you might have an old project pop up like this. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're actually just going to go up to file and hit new. And that's going to give us this menu here. All right. If you've never used GarageBand before, you'll probably get something that looks like this. Now I know some versions of GarageBand that you guys have might look a little different, but our ultimate goal is the same four track sequence. Okay or multi-track sequence. So we're going to select empty project. We want to start blank slate. Then we're going to get another menu that pops up. We are going to primarily be using software instruments. Okay. Um, the software instruments are the instruments that are already pre-existing in GarageBand. Keyboard synthesizers, guitar sounds, drum sounds, etc. cetera. Um, you can record your voice if you want to. If you are uh, itching to sing or maybe beatbox or something, I would be totally into that. Um, the two things that we won't be using at all are this guitar option here, which means you physically plug a guitar into your computer. I have the hardware for that here at school, but you don't at home. Um, and the other one is drummer. And as cool as this drummer option is, because it has pre-made loops, and sequences, we're going to make our own. We want to be fully original with this uh, project. So we're going to go to software instrument and we're going to go down to create. And we're going to get this screen here or something that looks like this screen. Uh, and now this is where our tracks are, where my mouse is sort of floating around. Right now we have one track. It says classic electric piano. Okay. Now I'm going to start and I would suggest you do the same with the drums. Starting with the drums gives you a sort of a solid beat, if that's what you're looking for. For me, I'm going to choose electronic drum kit over here in the options. These are all your sound options, by the way. Some you might have to download or they might say you have to download. But I'm going to choose electronic drums because there's some cool stuff here. Um, and I'm going to choose pile driver. I'm just randomly choosing pile driver. So it changes. Now I've got pile driver as my first track here. Okay. Now I'm gonna, when I record, it's gonna record along this sequence here. We're only recording to four. If I'm gonna zoom in here, you can see where four is. We're gonna record to the end of four, right? To where five starts. That's only as long as our sequence is gonna be. It's gonna seem really short. Now the cool thing about GarageBand is that you can actually play these instruments on your keyboard of your laptop. You see this musical typing keyboard here? If I type with my fingers on the keyboard, I get all the sounds. Ooh, some good ones. So I can play these instruments on my keyboard, which is what I'm going to do here in a minute. <clears throat> if you don't see this musical typing keyboard here right away, if you go up to window, you should have something that says show musical typing and click on that. Mine says hide because it's already shown. Okay. So I've got that. I'm going to figure out what sounds I want. That's the, temp that's, the, that's the sound I want to think. Now, your tempo, you can change the speed of your song at any point. I'm going to take mine way down to like 85 beats per minute. These purple buttons here should be on. They should be purple. One, two, three, four means it's going to give you a four count before we start, before it starts recording. And this click here means it's going to give you a constant metronome click to keep your steady beat. So I'm going to try it. Here we go. Here's my first track.
there's my four measure drum track. So I'm gonna play it back. Seems a little off to me. Now you don't have to re-record it if it seems off. If you do the two finger click on this thing, you go to quantize and I'm gonna say quantize to uh, 16th note. Now what that does is it aligns all of your notes, whether it's drums or notes on a keyboard, it aligns them to a rhythmic grid. So then you have a much tighter sound. Pretty sweet, huh? So there's my drum track. I'm pretty happy with it. I think it works. I'm gonna go back and now I'm gonna add another track. This will be my second track. This plus symbol here, you click that and you're gonna get this similar menu. I'm gonna choose software instrument again. And this time I'm gonna choose some sort of keyboard. I'm gonna go to synthesizer, EDM bass. I, I'm just picking these randomly by the way. FM wobble. Now I can try it out with my keyboard again. If I want it to be a lower sound, I can drag the keys to the next octave. That's pretty cool. I can also play with the synth sounds with these knobs down here, actually, where it says motion. Or filth, I don't know what that is. Now I know what it's filter. And so on. I'm going to choose another one. Let's see. Heavy wobble. Let's see what that does. I'm going to just record something. I don't know, it seems pretty cool. Let's see what it sounds like. I'm gonna go back. You can choose this button to go back to the beginning of your sequence. And there's my track. So now I've got two tracks. You're gonna keep adding tracks, two more. I'm gonna add another one. Maybe I'm gonna go to a synthesizer again. Maybe I'll go to, no, I'll go to synthesizer again. I'm gonna go to a pad, uh, Mercury Lake. I have no idea what that means. Wow, it's a little too like chilled out for me. I need something a little more. These are pretty funny, huh? There we go. I know it's kind of cheesy, but we're gonna try it anyway. I'm just playing it on my keyboard. I'm gonna stop. So I just need one more track. By the way, a very important tip, you can use your space bar to stop, start and stop. You can play with your space bar and you can stop with your space bar. It's very, very convenient to use, especially when you're trying to record. Um, okay, so I'm gonna just use one more sound. Let's go back to um, piano. I'm just gonna choose a piano. Oops, and you know what? I didn't add a new instrument. So I command undo. Let's add a new instrument. Now I have a new track. So this is track four for me. Electric piano. I don't know. Not a fan. I'm going to choose whatever this is, suitcase. No, 
I think I'll just go to a classic piano. Now you can change your effects here just like you could with your synthesizer. Here we go. Ten chords. All right. So I'm going to get rid of my keyboard now because now I've got all four of my tracks. I can think, wow, that keyboard is really loud. I'm going to turn it down in the mix. Boom, I have my four track sequence. Now, the last thing before we go, this, uh, if you select each track and you do the two finger click on it, you can go to loop or you can just select it and hit L. And I'm gonna deal with all these tracks. And then it just creates an infinite loop. And if I think, oh, it's too slow, I can just change the speed. Now I'm panning it. So the piano's in one ear and the uh, synthesizer's in another ear. So there is our four track sequence. And it's gonna automatically save, uh, or when you try and quit out, it's gonna ask you to save. So I'm gonna say save. And then it saves your sequence for you. Um, you'll probably wanna save it to your desktop because we're, we're gonna uh, listen to these. I'm gonna have you guys send them to me. And I'm gonna actually show you in another video how to export them, okay? So I'll say my sequence is test, whatever. And there it is right down here. Double click on it and it'll open GarageBand. All right, so any questions, send them to me in uh, an email or on Google Classroom and good luck, have fun, experiment, don't be shy. It's okay to make mistakes. <laughs>